Welcome to the Rex Andrews Show. Glad to have you here today. We're always excited to have uh, new listeners. So if you're a first time listener, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, appreciate you following us and being a part of the show. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you are. So that way you can get the latest updates. And always don't forget to go to the website, rexandrewshow.com, because you can get bios on all of our uh, guests, both past and present and upcoming and get interesting information on the things that we're doing. So today I have a little bit of a rant topic. I wanna to share a story. I talk about this a lot. You know, this is sort of a common sense thing and I, and I try not to get into politics and this has nothing to do with politics today. So <clears throat> my father was a member of the 82nd Airborne and he served in the 82nd Airborne in the early 1950s. He ended up being a paratrooper instructor. So not only did he jump out of airplanes, he threw people out of airplanes. Well, prior to his service back in World War II, the concept of what they called a pathfinder was invented and it's been used ever since. Now in World War II, there were, uh, just before they invaded uh, France, the army and the uh, rangers, the airborne at this point in time, and part of the British army were preparing and training to parachute behind the enemy lines from the Germans as they entered France. The idea was to squeeze the Germans on two fronts, to have them squeezed uh, from the west uh, as they landed at Normandy, Normandy uh, Omaha, Utah beaches, along the western coast of France, but then also to parachute in uh, soldiers. And they actually parachuted in over 23,000 soldiers uh, behind enemy lines. Well, in order to do this, you have to figure out the drop zones. Now they didn't have the technology that we have today. So the uh, technique that was used back then is they would parachute in with a radio um, podcast, um, podcaster beam that would actually emanate a signal that was then uh, received by a unit that was installed on the belly of the C-47s uh, that they were flying out to drop the troops with. And so they had to be able to um, get that uh, sound and get that wave so they would know where to drop them. In addition to that, they used lights. And so they had to put in and install in the landing zone lights. So this way the pilots would see them. So what they did is they had a group of um, paratroopers who volunteered to be what they called the pathfinders. And these were high risk assignments to be a pathfinder. Now the area that they dropped in to there was about 75 miles long. So think about that, that's a lot of distance. <clears throat> and they had uh, 18 different groups that signed up to be part of these um, pathfinders. And it was a high risk. They let people know that there's a chance that the uh, pathfinders could be stranded out there because there's because of weather, they could call the whole D-Day mission off. So there's about 300 of these guys and they were grouped in these groupings of 20. And they would jump out of the planes and they would have the transponders and they would have the lights. So each person had an assignment to do. And these assignments had to do with setting up the transponders, setting up the lights, and then protection. Well, these guys were all leaders. They were fearless. Um, and you have to keep in mind that at the time of World War II, uh, the average age of the uh, soldier was 20 and a half years old. So we're not talking really old um, men. They were very young, most of them out of um, high school. Some had been in college before they were drafted. So these are not guys in their late 20s or early 30s that are Rangers and, and they've been taught to um, you know, be the Navy SEAL types that we see today. So let me tell you a little quick of the story that happened here with the Pathfinders. So on about midnight on um, June 5th, D-Day invasion was June 6th. Uh, they flew, they took off from uh, England, and they were at an Air Force base in England, and they flew the C-47s um, out uh, over France. Well, the Germans had their big infantry unit there. It was the 91st Infantry Unit, 
and this was their most war season battle <clears throat> ready guys. These guys were experiencing pretty tough. They'd been in northern France and Italy and a very, very strong army. Well, one of the intelligence uh, pieces of information had them positioned wrong. And so they were in the wrong place. So when the Pathfinders were par parachuted out of their planes, rather than being behind the enemy lines, they were dropped almost right into the enemy lines. Now there were two big tasks that had to be completed. They needed to go and disarm um, the bridges that the Germans had, the, the intelligence, the spies had learned that they had armed all the bridges with explosives and were trying to make sure as they retreated that they could blow up the uh, bridges and slow down the advancement of the allied forces. So they jumped out of the planes and as they were coming down, uh, many of them were shot, shot in the air as they were parachuting down because the Germans suspected that the United States and Britain would be doing some, something of a similar um, move, but they kind of anticipated that there would be a parachute drop. Well, these guys got on the ground and they're right in the middle of enemy um, encampments. And luckily enough of them got through to be able to set up um, these um, radio signal emitter um, devices and also the, the flares. So they were in about an hour and a half to two hours ahead of the major troop drops. So what happened during these, this first Pathfinder experience behind enemy lines is uh, more than half of them were killed. So there were only about 150 um, that survived the entire um, uh, mission. Well, the United States uh, and Britain dropped in over 23,000 um, uh, paratroopers and then bombings began right along the shorelines above the cliffs and by allied planes. So they absolutely were just bombing it into submission. The point of me telling you about the Pathfinders is these soldiers were really what I would call brave people. They knew that the mission was high risk and they still signed up for it. They had an allegiance to the country. They had an allegiance and loyalty to the cause and they were willing to go in and fight and possibly give up their lives, which over half of them did in defense of our country. And it makes me think fast forwarding, if we would have people that would do that today in the year 2021, I severely doubt that we would have big, big um, numbers that would sign up to do that. Now, we have great people in our military today and they are fearless fighters and people who defend our country and our flag and the morals and characteristics that we believe in as Americans. But I think the, the big thing I'm trying to get to is that we have this leadership void and we have a culture where people are offended by words and people who are afraid to speak up and because they are afraid of being canceled, this whole cancel culture thing. And because of this, and because people are so focused on their own lives, that they don't be leaders. And we need more leaders. We need more pathfinders. We need people who will stick their head up or jump out of that plane and land and do what might be perceived as impossible. And it's really kind of a sad situation where we are in our culture today. And it's my hope and prayer that there are more people who will eventually stand up. There will be more people who will be willing to be pathfinders. Now pathfinding uh, with the paratroopers, especially the 81st Airborne, 82nd Airborne and the 101st uh, were used all the way up into the desert storm. Uh, they actually still need to have eyes on the ground many times. So uh, fast forward, they were used in the Korean War, they were used in Vietnam, they were used in several other excursions um, and then also in the desert storm in the Gulf War. So it's not a concept that went away with World War II. And people argue that World War II, those veterans were the greatest generation. But that 
that culture, that willingness to be brave, that willingness to be leaders has really gone clear up to, I would say, about 2010, and then things really started to fall off. So I talk about leadership void. It's on all levels, whether it's uh, at the elementary school, PTA, PTO, people reluctant to serve, people will, not willing to stand up, and, it, and it's pervasive and goes all clear up to our president. We don't have leaders. We have too many politicians. We have people, and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. We have people who are making careers out of being decision makers, and we have people who are afraid to be bold and afraid to do things like the right things. Like I would suggest we need term limits, and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. So when you hear somebody complaining about how rotten America is, on how terrible our systems are, or we have systemic, systemic racism, or we have all these issues. I want people to think back uh, to World War II and forward to the men and women who have been pathfinders and not just risk uh, shame or uh, cancel culture, they risk their lives. And I think that's an important concept that we need to get back to. There are things worth uh, putting our lives on the line. There are things that are important to us and we need to get back to being a country where we're all about freedom and we're all about the constitution and we're all about being morally correct and using common sense. So that's all I got to say about that today. I reach out to the audience and ask them, um, have you been a pathfinder? Is there something that you have thought about being a pathfinder about and would you going forward look at being a pathfinder. We'll call it a wrap for today. That's it for the Rex Andrews Show. Don't forget to visit the website at rexandrewshow.com where you can get bios, you can get cool information of the things we're doing, and you can also listen to the podcast there. And as always, I'll leave us with three things I say all the time. Be safe, be bold, and make it a great day.